Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're pleased to be here today to announce uh, the Senate Democrats' uh, release of a $200 million small business friendly plan for commercial property tax relief. Uh, later today, there will be a subcommittee meeting to discuss the details, but let me just highlight a couple things. During the first year, this proposed uh, very targeted small business tax relief uh, proposal would mean approximately a $600 property tax decrease for a person that has a property valued at $30,000 or less. This, this proposal is targeted at Main Street Iowa businesses uh, and provides a key focus to them. Um, this proposal over the over four years, hopefully in four years, it's, it's the increases are triggered by uh, increasing state revenues. We will responsibly provide more than 200 or approximately 200 million dollars in needed business and commercial property tax relief, uh, doing so without hurting local governments or our local schools who uh, we will responsibly backfill the, those uh, reductions in, in commercial property taxes with state revenues. Uh, you have more details about the proposal. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. No, actually not. We, what, we're do, what the proposal uh, uh, will do, will take the first $30,000 in assessed value. This is the first year of the proposal. And we'll essentially provide, uh, we will tax it at residential rates. So that first 30,000 will be taxed at approximately 15,000, the residential rollbacks just a, a little north of 50%. And, and that will mean approximately a $600 tax reduction uh, for that commercial property tax owner or property tax payer, I'm sorry. Uh, w w where we've started is to say, uh, if you have a building that's worth $100,000, a commercial building on Main Street in Oskaloosa versus uh, a Best Buy that's worth a million dollars in some uh, a suburban mall here, we start from the bottom and we take the first $30,000 in value of both of those uh, buildings and we apply our, essentially, our, the residential tax rate to it. And so the person that owns the $100,000 building is going to get $600 uh, reduction, and that Best Buy is also going to get $600 reduction. So we think by working from the bottom up on the value of a property, we will clearly focus the uh, benefits uh, uh, towards the smaller business owners, if that, if that example helps. Well, one of the main concerns uh, that we have with any tax proposals that we don't either shift uh, taxes from one taxpayer to another or simply say to local governments who are partners in economic growth, uh, you, you're going to have to do with hundreds of million dollars worth of less revenue to provide services and do, do your work. And so responsible for us was having a tax uh, relief effort for commercial businesses where we actually, uh, state government, help picked up the tab or paid for the cost of it. And responsible, you know, everybody would like to do more, but we believe of working in these $50 million increments going up to $200 million is, is uh, something that we can accommodate as a state, provide significant benefit to those small business owners who are about trying to create jobs in this economy, uh, but at the same time, continuing good partnership with local governments and our local schools. Well, I, I think the, 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 the genius of our proposal, if I can use that word, is that the escal it, it only will increase when state revenues are healthy enough to accommodate it. So this, we would say that, the, and the legislation says that uh, we'll start out with $50 million, but it, the, the, the trigger for the next $50 million increment is a requirement that the state has at least 4% revenue growth. And we believe with 4% revenue growth, we can accommodate another 50 million to 150 to 100 to 150 million, getting up to 200 million. Hopefully, over the next four years, if revenue growth is healthy. Uh, the tax credit grows. The the universe is the universe, and we've been working with Department of Revenue, uh, looking at property tax. The counties manage the property tax records. We've had to do a 
a complete analysis of how many commercial properties there are, uh, and so we start. That's, that's that's correct. Six hundred dollars. That is kind of the floor. Uh, it would go up to roughly about fifty-three hundred dollars uh, reduction for the most. For if you have a business, say worth twenty million dollars, commercial building worth twenty million dollars. It, it would, I think, max out around fifty-three hundred dollars in, in property tax relief. Yes. Um, we think that. I'd be happy to. Just want, come, come, you know, we 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 recognize. You know, everybody I think recognizes that commercial property taxes uh, have been uh, a disproportionate burden on job creation. Uh, and we think that this mechanism, this approach, uh, is going to provide very targeted relief at an issue that we've probably heard most about in our communities, the need to do something on commercial property taxes. So um, I think this is, a res again, a responsible proposal and, well, and, and most needed in, in this economy. <coughs> um, for, the, for the House Democrats part, we're actually excited about this proposal because it, it, it potentially serves as a basis to have a compromise with uh, the governor on a tax relief proposal because it proves uh, our larger point we've been trying to make all year that you can do a tax cut in, 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 if you do it in a responsible fashion. Uh, you can also uh, keep our preschool system and fund allowable growth. There's still the money there to do a tax cut, but it's crafted in such a way with their trigger mechanism uh, that it's affordable, okay? It's, it's affordable and sustainable and it's something we can do and still balance our budget, fund our priorities. That's in contrast to the House Republicans proposal uh, thus far, which is uh, uh, bigger tax cuts on the backs of children. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully, since the governor, to his credit, has proposed a tax cut we don't agree with, which is a $200 million tax increase on casinos to pay for a $200 million tax cut. To his credit, though, he pays for it in his proposal. This is paid for, this proposal. And so we're, uh, we're excited and hopeful that, that, at least on the tax cut portion, that might be able to serve as the basis for uh, compromise discussions with the governor. Uh, The one, in the, the one in the House side uh, is, is done on the backs of wiping out our entire preschool system, and that's, that's something that we, uh, we oppose. Okay? Now, not a, we've never said we're opposed to tax relief. There's a way to do it and fund our priorities, and that's what this proposal does. Um, and then I'll just say lastly that uh, the kind of the wheels have come off uh, in the House, uh, and, and it's been exemplified by a couple things that happened yesterday. Uh, and we've talked about we've been doing divisive issues one after another, week after week. I uh, didn't think that the divisive issue yesterday, that we would spend more time uh, talking about uh, access to the women's restroom on the floor of the house than we debated allowable growth yesterday. Um, and uh, it, it's disappointing. Also, for the first time in my, I don't have a long legislative career, but for the first time in my legislative career, I watched uh, uh, members of the Republican Party suspend the rules on their own members. Um, uh, Representative Lons and Massey and Shaw and Pearson and uh, DeBooth, I think was the other one. But six, six Republicans, uh, uh, against uh, their own leadership, uh, a move to suspend the rules to consider legislation that the leadership objected to, and there was a record vote put on the board. In the past, you've had the minority party suspend the rules, you see, and then maybe one or two members might vote with the other side. This is the first time I've ever seen members try to roll their own leadership. Um, so you have infighting over the access to the restroom, uh, a, lot of, a lot of debate, I'm told several hours was spent yesterday trying to figure out access to the women's restroom, fighting about that in their caucus, and they suspended the rules on their own members. Um, again, it's been kind of a disappointment in terms of doing uh, uh, the issues of, of violence. I solicited donations last fall from anybody that I thought had money. It asked and answered. Stay tuned. Go to, uh, attend the committee meeting. See what happens. Yeah, they take no, the temperature that. Um, there's lots of temperatures that have been taken. 
Obviously not. We've not, uh, we've not been willing to take up uh, House legislation to abolish the preschool program in the state of Iowa. It's unlikely we will ever move to a position where we want to dismantle something and, and take 25,000 kids out of preschool in the state of Iowa. But that's not a road we're interested in going down. We're committed to providing additional resources for mental health, for, uh, for indigent mental health uh, across the state of Iowa Bef before, the, before the end of this session. No, it's on, it's on all of our radar screens. We have, a, we have a group on the House side that's working on a redesign. We have a group on the Senate side that's working on a redesign. Uh, we're gonna, we are going to come up with additional resources, significant additional resources, um, to deal with the delivery of mental health services in the state of Iowa before the end of this session. I'm not aware of any of the resolutions you just spoke of, so they were not uh, authored by me or anyone that no one has brought those to my attention. Um, the, the, the resolution process, when we were in the majority, this is inside baseball stuff here, I don't, but the, when we were in the majority, uh, uh, we established a guideline that uh, um, resolution had to be national in scope, okay, and, uh, uh, and it had to be bipartisan. Those basically were guidelines, national in scope and bipartisan, and that's because for sheer time purposes, uh, you have legislative districts. Uh, your average legislative district on the House side is three counties. You have every, you know, baseball championship, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, basketball championship, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. I mean, you'd be doing resolutions 24 hours a day uh, if you allowed individual legislators to do things like that. I, th I think what you're, what you're referring to, some of those are going to be placed on what's called a unanimous consent calendar. And if any legislator objects, then they're taken off. If they're not, then they're passed in swift fashion. So. Um, these would not be things that take up the uh, floor time, but I, I'm not aware of it. When you say it made it, when you, I don't know that we spent oh, floor time on it. Any, it may any, have passed on any, unanimous consent. In other words, there was no time spent on it. Any it passes any absolutely. Any additional consent. substantive right, questions? Yeah. Are we voting on the map? I, I don't think we've crossed that bridge yet. We're going to wait and see what the public hearing um, results are, and we're going to um, listen to the recommendations of the temporary um, redistricting um, uh, committee and see what their recommendations are to us. Uh, we're evaluating the map. Everybody's evaluating the map. But we're looking at it, and we're trying. Everybody's trying to calculate whether there's a, there's a pathway to victory. Um, the, the governor. The governor did not. Uh, you got to be. The governor did not propose 500 million. What the governor proposed was a massive tax shift away from commercial to residential. It was not tax relief. It's a tax shift. Calling it 500 million in tax um, cuts is just plain inaccurate. So our proposal pays for it. There is no tax shift in our proposal, and it targets it to small business. If they're operating out of what is um, residential property, then they are getting the break of the residential rollback already. It's the commercial properties on Main Street that will see 30, 60, 90, 120. So if you've got a half million dollar property on Main Street, at the end of four years, half your value of that property will, a half your value will get your rollback. That's a pretty significant tax cut. Just to respond to your question without talking about 
resolutions I'm not aware of. It's the majority party that controls the, the calendar with regard to resolutions, and they're having a press conference, I know, immediately after this one. I'd recommend you ask them. Uh, what, um, what's your question? Same problem is the other uh, billion dollar in tax cuts that have come out of the committee. I think it's about 1.5 billion dollars. Uh, uh, they don't do it within the context of a balanced budget, uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's done on the backs of children as well. Um, so it's just not sustainable, not affordable. One half for five years. Yeah. Now, if you're if you're a business owner, though, you really at least see the rates go down, um, and if you're a prospective business owner, you know, the rates go down. Uh, with, with this proposal, uh, if you're a business owner, you'll see your rates go down deeper than they go under the governor's proposal. You won't see your, you won't he rolls see it. He rolls it back. No, the rate on the first increment of value goes from 100% as a commercial okay, property so that's down that's to 50 points, what's the number? 50.4 or something like that. So it actually goes more down further than the governor. That's correct, mm -hmm. yes. This would be better than the governor's plan. If you're a small business, better by far. Well, if we keep our public preschool system, fund allowable growth, and make sure we can do it within the confines of a balanced budget, we'd be open to supporting it. Mm -hmm. Is that your understanding? Um, no, that's not my understanding, but it's possible. Uh, we're, uh, we're at that stage where we've got mm -hmm. to be kind of resolving our differences between the House and the Senate on the amounts in our budget bills, and we're going to be working through. That's going to be our biggest uh, focus of the next couple weeks is to it may be a challenge. We still think we're um, we're on schedule to be able to get out of here by the end of this month. We're going we're to do our best to meet that deadline. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. If the, if, if the governor if the governor wants to engage in budget gimmicks that concentrate power in his hands, we'll have a response that works for the people of Iowa. 